Oh, it's getting worse. Wow. That, that might be too much. Hey crew, I've got the key to that Camaro ZL1 1LE. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. This is a vehicle you guys have been asking me about for a long time. Unfortunately, the press fleets around me do not have one. And with it about to be discontinued, I mean the Camaro itself, I needed to ask an owner to let me drive his. So Peter at Detail Union here in Monrovia, California, was kind enough to let me get behind the wheel. And I'm very much excited. This is a 2019, but the car effectively hasn't changed since the 1LE was introduced in 2018. So this is still a relevant review for the modern model year car. Up front, we have the flow tie badge where air can pass through and tons of functional front ventilation. Peter added a winch point because he tracks this car. There's a ZL1 badge. You get HID headlights with incandescent turn signals and LED DRLs. Beneath that, we've got more functional cooling and these very neat dive planes on the 1LE along with a giant front lip splitter. There's carbon fiber for the hood on the 1LE with heat extraction points here, ZL1 badge. This car was originally in the cherry red color, but Peter vinyl wrapped it. It's a detail union car, I understand. At the side, the 1LE gets a set of 19 inch wheels instead of 20s in gloss black wrapped in Goodyear Eagle F1 3R, basically street legal track tires, sized 305 section front and 325 at the rear. Within those wheels are big Brembo steel brakes with red painted calipers and ZL1 badging. The lower sills are in a flat black along with the mirror caps. Stepping back to look at the profile, the 1LE sits low with its long hood and chiseled body just means business. And that satin vinyl wrap accentuates the creases. Here at the back, the 1LE gets a fixed carbon fiber wing, which you can no longer get on the 24 model year cars. Darkened taillight housings with LED turn signals. Those are above a flat black diffuser and four exhaust outlets. And they are sticking out kind of far because this is an aftermarket cap back exhaust. Peter didn't install it, it was on the car when he bought it. The ZL1 1LE has to be one of the most purposeful designs on the road today. It's not just menacing, but everything on it is meant for something. My question for you, do you prefer the more flared out look of the 1LE or the more fly into the radar standard ZL1? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. I'd also like to thank Home Depot for letting me use their lot to film this video. If you want to sponsor me, Home Depot, I'm open to it. Opening up. And ooh, get a peek at that original dark cherry color. Looking inside at this black interior with a mix of suede and leather on these Recaro sport buckets that are heated and ventilated with power adjustments and two positions of memory for the driver's seat. Pull on this tab to access the rear seat accommodations, which are not very accommodating. I'm not gonna slide back there now, but I will say I did and my head didn't clear the roof. I'm at six feet tall. You do get a wireless charging pad, that's neat. And seat perforations. Here is a Camaro tread plate. On the doors we find suede with hard plastics, a little more suede, a little more suede with padding and more hard plastics. Some gloss carbon fiber here, two one touch windows, power adjusting, not power folding door mirrors, and a Bose sound system on the 1LE. Pop that button and find nine cubic feet of space in the trunk. Unfortunately, it's a very narrow opening, so Whatever you get back there is whatever you get back there. Sliding inside and closing up the door. Decently solid thud, a little bit of rattle there. The steering wheel is suede wrapped and feels excellent in the hands. It's not overly thick, I like that. These paddles in the back of the wheel are to turn on and off rev matching. Some gloss carbon fiber here around the ZL1 badge. And let's pop it in accessory mode to turn on the eight inch touchscreen infotainment system. Yeah, not big by today's standards, but it is quite good in terms of responsiveness. And there's a steep rake on it, so there's not any glare. It does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Yikes, and I had to turn on the car to get some AC. It is so stinging hot. Beneath the screen, we've got a volume knob, you got tuner buttons, home button, and then some climate controls here to adjust the temperature on the dual zone climate. You turn these dials around the air vents. I like that, I think it's very clever. Suede wrapping around the gear selector for your six-speed Tremec manual, and the ZL1 1LE is only 
manual equipped. I love that. There are hard plastics around that. Don't dig that. Leather wrapping on top of the console where you find a very small bit of storage with two USB-A ports, suede wrapping on the dash, and hard plastics up high. There is a head-up display. You have an analog tack and speedo with a reconfigurable portion in between where you can work through some other information. That's neat. Visibility. We know where this is going. The Camaro is notorious for terrible visibility, and I'm seeing pretty much the same thing. The V at the back, not great. The V at the side, got a tiny window. Otherwise, that's just a blind spot. You do get standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. And headroom for me at six feet tall is good. Head clears the roof by enough for me to fit a helmet on to hit the track, which is obviously very important in the 1LE. So that gets the thumbs up. And this cabin overall has some really nice touches like the suede wrapping and the Recaro sport buckets with heating and ventilation, but they don't do a great job disguising all the cheapness and the rear passenger accommodations are not so great. Now let's take the ZL1 1LE out for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. <laughs> the burbles of overrun on the startup. I have a feeling the cat back exhaust system has a part to play in the enthusiasm of that welcome. And welcome to you, cabin camera crew, and thank you for joining for this drive review in the ZL1 1LE. Our drive mode selected here. Let's begin in tour and forgive, we're gonna have some AC noise I need it on. It's like 100 degrees outside. So, over into reverse, down with the e-brake, up comes a decent resolution backup camera. It does take some getting used to the rake of that screen. And do we have trajectory lines? We do, look at us. It's already bouncy, it's not a good sign. We'll kick things off with a turning radius test. I'll swing wide over here. Then line us up and crank the wheel. Should be plenty of margin here. And indeed it is, but not by as much as I thought. So the turning radius in the 1LE is not amazing. I mean, you've got 305 section front tires. Can't imagine those turn very easily in the wheel arches and turn signal sound. barely hear of the exhaust. <laughs> it's not a problem though. How about the world famous horn test? I know you want to hear it. Hmm. Okay. A little complainy for my liking. What do you think? Is that a good sounding horn or no? Now we do have a bit of a drive before we get to the good road that I am excited to venture on. But I thought this was important to have some real world driving around town in the 1LE because you look at this package, the wider tires and all of the aero and the low front splitter and you think, and the DSSV Multimatic dampers and you think, all right, that's gonna be a pain to live with day in and day out. And we've gotta find out if it is. And already I can tell you that I have had to take driveways at quite the angle so I wouldn't scrape the front splitter. And already I can tell you that those spool valve dampers, which they chose over the standard magnetic ride dampers that are in the standard ZL1, for their lightness and the additional adjustability that you can make to them, do provide a firmer ride, 100%. We're just all over the pavement here. And this isn't a smooth road, we're in an industrial area but this is a real world situation. And it's not comfortable, not unbearable. Actually, the dampening is sufficient for the impacts not to jar me, but the busyness of this platform could get tedious in a hurry. It's very easy to modulate the brake pedal come up to a smooth stop. I like that. Not too grabby with the pedal as some race prepped cars can be. Let's get into the motor because it's something I'm quite fond of considering the LT4 supercharged 6.2 liter V8 is found in my CT5V Blackwing as well as is the Tremec six-speed manual. 
importantly, the Blackwing can be had with a 10 speed. The ZL1 1LE version can only be had with a six speed manual. And this is such a winning combination. This motor is velvety smooth around town. The gearbox is such an easy one to operate. You might think for how intense this vehicle is that the gearbox would be persnickety, but it's not, it's very forgiving. The throws are clear, the gates are defined, the clutch pickup, the engagement point and release point are so transparent that honestly a newbie could drive this Tremec 6-speed without much issue. And that lends itself to this car, even with the busy suspension, being more livable than one might expect measure of throttle response and tour is very progressive it's smooth I didn't give you the power outputs sorry 650 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque that is down 18 horsepower to my CT 5d Blackwing but when you're dealing with about 200 pounds less weight it it certainly nets out at the very least or gives the power to weight advantage to the ZL1 1LE it's not hard to track this car straight some of these vehicles, I remember driving the Mustang, Shelby Mustang GT 350R, and it was just tram lining all over the place. The moment you hit a groove, it would just follow that. So you had to really crank the wheel back, at least monitor it all the time to point straight. But you definitely don't have to do that in this vehicle. Drive it casually, as wild as that is to say. You know, I actually might have found a stretch of road that is unbearable in the 1LE. It's got all these grooves in it that I think are there by design for semi-trucks, but if you're in a 1LE, it turns this into a torture chamber. Oh, railroad tracks. Actually, we got through that okay. But if it's not the impacts, it's all the undulations that have you rocking around like you're trying to dance. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's getting worse. Wow. That, that might be too much. It might be too much every single day. But let's forget about the daily driving for just a moment, because we're on a road that is better suited to what the 1LE was meant to do. So let's move it into the sport drive mode, and I'll turn on the rev match feature just as I get familiar. And warming up. Rip is tremendous. The turn in is quick and the weight is dialed up perfectly. We are bouncing around a ton here. But I'm good with it because the road calls for stiffness of the chassis. This feels right at home on tight technical roads like these. The powertrain just delivers in a straight line. And the noise coming out of the back is delicious. Amplified by that cat back exhaust. Not mad about it. Big Brembos provide the stopping power I'm looking for. The stopping power you need in a vehicle this potent. They've got good bite and a confident pedal. The 1LE feels so planted in the corners. stability fills you with confidence. The limited slip differential in the back has no issues divvying up the power, getting it to that outside tire, which itself has just unstoppable grip. 
at over 3,800 pounds, the 1LE doesn't feel light. But it's so in control of its mass that it's almost like you're unaware of it. The performance traction management system only ever stepping in when it feels it's absolutely necessary. This car is unreal in this environment. It's so comfortable and so capable. I'm having an incredible amount of fun here. <laughs> and you might be curious how quick the 1LE gets to 60. For that, I've got my race box and I'm gonna do my best here. So I've just got us in track drive mode. I've got traction control in the competitive setting and I'm gonna launch it around 2,500 RPM. Get there at first, so I'm not gonna shift. And zero to 60 in 4.09 seconds. Now, while that launch was halfway decent, it certainly wasn't as quick as independent tests have gotten from this vehicle after doing it again and again and again. They saw the high three second range for the manual equipped ZL1 with one LE and about a 10th or two tenths quicker for the automatic equipped version of the ZL1. I don't really care because the launch to 60 is fun and all, but it's nowhere near as entertaining as piloting this car through a twisty bit of road. You can even hear the supercharger whine a little bit in this car, which is almost completely absent my CT5V Blackwing. And in the track drive mode, it's even stiffer than before. Just laser focused and keeps the grip. Got the rev match feature turned off now so I can flip my own throttle. And the pedal placement is just right for doing that. I'm really bonding with this car. In a similar way that I do with my Blackwing. But with limits that are just so much higher. This platform is perfect. The steering telegraphs the car beautifully, feels connected to every one of my whims. The brake feels amazing, the braking power is solid, the responsiveness of this motor. I did think coming into this drive that I would need a track to actually enjoy it, to fully enjoy it. But that's just not the case. I'm having so much fun on a good twisty road. So much so that I think I would put up with the brittle ride. I would put up with the terrible visibility. With the incredibly cramped rear seats, I'd put up with all of that just so I had access to this kind of performance any given weekend. <laughs> I might actually get the axle back exhaust as well, just because that noise is incredible. It grabs you. I think it's about time that we get into the Mouse Brower word of the day, which for the ZL1 1LE, any of the model years of this current generation car, that word is formidable, meaning inspiring fear or respect at the very least 
through intensity or power. That is this car, summed up so perfectly in one single word. It is a visual menace, it is a practical menace when you're behind the wheel. So incredibly capable, but something that you darn better respect. Now before we get into pricing and competition, let's talk about the top speed and the fuel economy. Top speed for the 1LE is 191 miles per hour, and the fuel economy is 14 mpg in the city, 16 on the highway, sorry, 20 on the highway, and 16 combined. The starting figure for the ZL1, the standard car, is $70,000, and if you want the 1LE package, that's an additional $7,500, bringing the starting price of this car, kind of as tested, to be around $77,500. Track-focused competitors. We're looking at vehicles like the Ford Shelby GT500 that starts around $81,000, makes 760 horsepower, gets to 60 in three and a half seconds, has a top speed of 180 miles per hour and fuel economy of 14 combined. There's also the Lexus RCF Fuji that starts at $98,000, makes 472 horsepower, gets to 60 in four seconds flat, and a stop speed of 168 miles per hour with fuel economy of 19 combined. Important to note about both of those vehicles, they're both automatic only. And yes, there are more expensive options like the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4, and I mean, don't even get me started on the GT4 RS in terms of the price. You've got the Chevy Corvette Z06, of course, but both the GT4 and the Z06 are at least $30,000 more expensive. And yes, you are getting sharper cars in at least certain situations, but for that price penalty, I'm just gonna keep it to the GT500, the RCF Fuji, or the ZL1 1LE. Among those, while I really enjoy driving the Lexus RCF Fuji, that NAV, it sounds incredible, it's very sharp in technical environments, it just feels overpriced for what you're getting compared to vehicles like this and the GT500, which are more capable for a fair bit less money. The GT500, incredible car, insane power, so good on track, and fun to drive around town, but it being automatic only, it feels a little more reserved for the track than the ZL11 Elite. This car, as I've said already, has thrilled me with what it can be on a daily basis, which is to say, really rough to live with, but worth it. Because on the weekends, if you have access to roads like this, it is going to inhale them and fill you with this incredible joy. While the GT500 can definitely do the same thing, but it's for a little more money and with a little less involvement than the ZL1 1LE. Friends, the Camaro as we know it is about to just vanish. Yeah, it may come back as some EV thing that I'm sure will be good in its own right, but it won't be this car. This internal combustion, supercharged, manual, rear drive viciousness is not going to be possible after this model year. And I would say it's so good that you shouldn't walk to a dealership. You should run. Actually, maybe not a dealership. Maybe you should just put an order in because dealerships can gouge you. But I just have to thank Peter for letting me get behind the wheel of this car, something I've wanted to do for a great number of years and it's not been possible in the automotive press fleet. So thank you, Peter. Go check out Detail Union if you're in the Monrovia Air Airport and definitely check out the ZL1 if you're considering something in this segment because it's chef's kiss. It's just, it's wonderful. Which would you guys choose? Would you have the ZL1 1LE? Would you have the Shelby GT500? Would you have the Lexus RCF Fuji? Or would you spend a lot of extra money for the 718 Cayman GT4 or Chevy Corvette Z06? Let me know in the comments. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. Listen to that overrun. And I will see you again next time.